Hey, hey, it's Stevie A, and welcome to episode 4 of this proliferation run. And today we have a very nice day on our little planet. But first things first, we are going to look at the names we have given to our planets. And I went with the suggestion made by Rick Hagen in English, or Rick Hagen in Dutch. And I had one planet to spare, or at least a sun to spare, so I figured I'd give it to you as your name. And we basically have now named our planets after famous actuaries. This is only the first system, so we're going to need more suggestions for the other systems. But for now, we are sticking to Reddington, Halley, Kramer, Morgan. And those are the four names that I picked from the famous actuary list that Rick was so kind to supply. So, now we have planets that are not named Cat, so we can actually go on to doing some more useful stuff. And specifically, what we want to do in this episode is kind of rush yellow science and start our super mall now the last bit is going to take a little bit of work not in, just in this episode but over the next few episodes but let's start with first things first so we want to rush yellow science why do we want to rush yellow science well um several reasons actually so the the point in the game you reach after you have researched the red science which we did last episode it's really one of those things where you have like a ton of options available to you you can suddenly build mark 2 uh, assemblers you can even go all the way up to mark 3 belts uh, mark 3 sorters you have a ton of new stuff uh, items you can produce um, basically you want to do all of it at the same time with one small problem because you don't actually have access to the most awesome building in the game which is the interstellar logistics station because that needs yellow science because of that i kind of want to rush for yellow science and then rush our way to ils and then then we have all the tools that we need in order to really set up our end game base um, the reason for that being is you are going to need ILSs to effectively do that. So I don't want to spend five or six episodes setting up a base that we will then have to pretty much redesign from scratch um, to make it end game proof. So hence rushing to yellow signs. That also means that in order for you to be able to play along, I highly recommend that you research the few things that you need moving up to yellow signs, which is the um, organic crystal, it's the titanium crystal and then of course you are going to need the structure matrix itself you will also need as you can see not just the uh, titanium crystal you also need diamonds which i think is somewhere up here um yeah crystal smelting you are also going to need that and i also highly suggest that one of the first things that you pick up is the mass construction level three why because it will allow you to use the blueprints i am actually going to show you so without this you won't be able to build them so i highly suggest you get that first um, other than that get everything else <laughs> you are going to need all the resources anyway uh, but you might want to kind of prioritize the upgrades to your mech because it will make your building process a lot faster so for example you can increase the speed of your drones um you can actually get two levels i think of communication control so one will give you two more drones and the other one gives all your drones one extra task so this effectively doubles the amount of drones at least the speed at which your drones do stuff um very much worth getting and you might also want to get um, the inventory capacity because we will be making a few trips up and down to the other planets now what are we going to do well before you do that and while you're doing this research because if you start playing right after you completed whatever uh, I showed you in the last episode in terms of the red science and stuff like that you will not actually have this stuff so you won't be able to place down um, the blueprints right away so what you can actually do and that is what I did you can spend some time building some power because you will need a lot of it and as you can see well, let's go to the light side of the planet I am basically making a little a ring around the planet on the upper few layers of the grid where I'm using the uh, exactly spaced out wind turbines to supply all my power. We don't have solar panels yet, uh, something we will be working on quite soon. And um, of course you can also use the blueprint that I showed you for the um, thermal power. But once again, we are going to actually need our oil. So I prefer not to use that 
but that's my preference feel free to use thermal power if you do want to use that uh, similarly i have a smaller version of that wind turbine hub type of thing on the top uh, where we initially started uh, but i happen to be on the other side of the planet now you should have your turbine production automated at this point so it's just a matter of placing a few hundred of those down um not a few hundred probably more like 100 but still it's uh, it is a little bit of work but it will pay off because of course we are proliferating everything and that costs you a lot of uh, power now i've made a little blueprint for the yellow signs kind of rush to that uh, this will be a build based on proliferation with extra products rather than speed so if you're wondering about the ratios, I made it two ratio, perfect ratios, at least as perfect as we can get them while proliferating, because of course fractions are something that will be in every single build now, so we can't really avoid that. Um, but if you're wondering why I'm using the extra products, I highly suggest that you check out my video on which setting for proliferation is best. I will hopefully remember to link it in the corner right now. So there, great, then I didn't forget. Okay. Um, so let me place down the blueprint and walk you through it. The whole point of the blueprint is to kind of align with our previous build. Um, you don't need to do that, but I like keeping things as neat as possible. So hence this location, but let's go and build some stuff. And there we go. We now have this nice little build. It's not the com biggest, most complex build in the world but it is uh, very nicely laid out i think and look at this nice little line going through here that is actually able to splice with all the uh, proliferators that we need in all our different sprays now you do notice um, that our little production facility of proliferators is actually having some issue keeping up with the demand on this belt why is that well we only have one of that so you might want to build a second to make sure that this is actually fully supplied but um, we are not going to do that right now because this is only going to be a temporary rebuild because right now we're of course we are still using mark 1 proliferators and thanks to yellow signs we will be able to get to mark 3 really soon and the difference is quite large so I recommend that you don't fill around too long with mark 1s and trying to optimize that when you're going to replace all of that anyway so what are we doing we are smelting some uh, graphite so proliferated coal into graphite on this belt here to proliferate it once again kind of the downside of having uh, a ratio built with every single line of components in it because you do actually need to flip around these belts a little bit here and there to make sure you can actually proliferate all the stuff that you need um, the alternative is of course to stretch it out but then you get very uh, very uh, thin long builds which especially on a planet that's basically filled with half oceans that's not really convenient um, hence I, I chose to do it this way it just means we have to split the blueprint in two because it's slightly too big for the 900 building limit um, we also get some oil over here well that's very nice because of course we have to oil down here so we can just get a belt and get it in there from the bottom uh, we actually have some coal here i think as well uh, as you can see we have coal right next to the red science so it's very close by as well and water well we have water right here so that should not be a problem now that makes the uh, plastic which we haven't made before but that's really straightforward to make just some oil and some um, graphite you might actually um, think why i'm not directly inserting it into the organic crystals like i've done for example in my previous run well if you insert it directly you won't be able to proliferate which again means that we have this plastic going out on this belt flipping around and then on this same line as over here we are proliferating it and then picking it back up into the organic crystal um we also need some titanium and why do we need that well we are going to make some titanium crystals which are made from organic crystals and titanium so pretty straightforward one problem we don't actually have titanium so we'll need to get it from the other planet before we do that however don't forget we also need diamonds and we have graphite on this build as well so this is the nice thing about having several things in the same build we can use the same belt of proliferated graphite to make our diamonds and then the diamonds and titanium crystals go out on this belt and then out over here and these are the two materials that we are going to need for yellow science 
So basically, the only thing we have to do is make sure we get some titanium from somewhere, hook everything up to the already present materials we have on this planet, and then build our yellow science facility in it. Done we are. We can just make some yellow signs. And remember, once you get to the yellow science point, you should prioritize getting the uh, interstellar logistics over here. Very obviously um, needed for optimizing your prediction chain. And you should also get proliferators mark three. Why? Because these are awesome. And that is, of course, going to be the core of every build we make after this. After that, it uh, doesn't really matter what you take. But of course, don't forget to take all the uh, lower tier research as well. Lower tier research. Sorry, st stop correcting me. Um, and um, yeah, then we're pretty much good to go. Uh, don't also forget to get a titanium alloy because that is going to be an input for um, the ILS. But yeah, it's connected, you can't forget it. Anyway, ignore me. The integrated logistics system is also worth picking up. We won't be using it a lot for the next few episodes, I think at least. But um, it's a cool build. Get it anyway. All right. Now, uh, what do we need to do? Well, we need to hook everything up. And then we, what we are going to do is kind of clean our inventory. Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of foundation only in other buildings and stuff. Um... And I will talk you through kind of what you should take to the other planet for your first trip in order to be as efficient as you can. But first, let's hook everything up. Okay, so just a quick shopping list before you jump to the other planet. Uh, you want to bring some fuel, prefer preferably proliferated fuel. Don't be like me, I've been walking around for the past few hours with unproliferated graphite just because I put the little box on the wrong side of the proliferator. So, yeah. Um... You don't want to run out of energy when you run the other planet. That's probably not going to happen as long as you bring some wireless power towers so you can easily recharge yourself. So it's very convenient to have those on you. Don't leave your planet without them. You're also going to want to bring some turbines because we, of course we do need to set up some initial power production. Uh, bring maybe a thousand, maybe 1200 uh, belts or something like that so you have enough. You don't want to run out of belts on the other planet either. Uh, maybe two stacks of sorters is probably going to be enough. If you're going to use my blueprints, small warning, I made a few larger builds for the other planet. So you might want to bring, uh, well, maybe not 200 plus like I've got over here, but at least three stacks of smelters. Uh, one stack of um, assembling machines will be just fine. One stack of power towers is also going to be just fine. Um, maybe a few splitters that I like using them. Don't forget to bring your spray coaters because they are in the blueprints and you might as well bring them. And don't be like me unless you are crazy about foundations as well. Um, you can leave all your foundations at home. I just like decorating stuff. So I bring uh, way too much with me anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, and of course, last but not least, don't forget your miners. Because otherwise you're not actually going to be doing a lot of mining on the other planet. Okay, let's jump over there. And there we are. We did some universe exploration. We now arrived at Rick Hagen 1, apparently, and we named it Redditon, which I think we already did, but okay. And look at this. It's actually quite a nice planet, or little lava planet. There is a, a lot of streams of lava, which is actually quite convenient in terms of placing power. Now, I haven't actually tried this yet in a plant, lava planet like this, so I am going to be surprised on where we can actually fit these uh, thermal uh, geothermal power plants but i think it should be large enough to fit it nicely in a lot of these spaces so we can kind of spread around the the uh, power around this planet but i'm getting way ahead of myself because what are we here to do well we are here to build some very basic production and of course i set up a couple of um, blueprints for that which i will link in the description but i'm going to build them now for you and then we have are going to walk through them okay and here we go this is a pretty simple smelting setup for titanium silicon and copper and yes before you start yelling at me i know i know i know there is no way in which we can actually actively have all these smelters work with only mark one belts which is what we're currently using however i designed this with in mind the fact that we actually have access to mark three belts sorters mark two assemblers and so on we simply haven't built them yet. So all we need to do is build those. And then we can go back to these facilities. Hit that mass upgrade button. And then we have the facility that we actually want. And we don't have to remove it, rebuild it, etc. 
So it is basically an upgradable build for these three materials. Now you could actually make all your builds very similar to these builds, so very modular, just one item per build. I am not actually going to do that. You can, however, it's a perfectly valid type of playing. It's actually what I used in the uh, earlier playthrough on this uh, channel. It's my blueprint, blueprint run, so feel free to check that. Uh, basically all you need to do is add some proliferators to that and you're good to go. Uh, it works perfectly fine. It is also, in my opinion, a slightly boring way to play the game. Now, um, keep in mind, of course, that boring is a relative term, um, but it basically comes down to stamping down more or less the same build a few dozen times and then you're done with the game. So, in my opinion, not the most engaging. And it also has a drawback because it is very hard to balance your production chains if you do it like that. You build, for example, turbines then you find out that you're low on engines then you wonder why am i low on engines and it turns out you need more cog so you build and build for that and it turns out you need more iron and you build and build for that and then it turns out that because everything else is working you need more magnets if you've played this game for a little bit longer you probably know what i'm talking about and i really hate having to track down up and down the production chains 20 times just to fix one problem so what I will do instead is kind of approach a different way to the game, similar to what I did in my previous playthrough, the last one, uh, my perfect ratio run, and that is use a build that goes from uh, raw materials to the end game product that we want, with a twist, because rather than going for the end game buildings, we are going for the um, production, the items that we actually need in our various buildings. So every single build that we make, so in this very small example, it's going to be a full belt of circuit boards. We're making this in such a way that we can use those circuit boards everywhere else in our empire, I would say, in the entire galaxy. That way um, we avoid the problem that we ran into last playthrough where there's a couple of builds that we've made which looked awesome. So that is one reason to make them. But there were a few people that pointed out that things like particle colliders, you don't really need 100 or more of those things, um, maybe until the very, very late game. So it doesn't really make sense to make a specific build for that, but all the inputs that you use for that are being used in several other builds as well. So you might as well just make those inputs and then spread the love around. And actually it's more optimal to do it that way. So you can make sure you're always using your production in places where you need it at the time. Now, other than that, there's a few other benefits in using this type of modular approach. And so you don't have to search for your problem in your production chain. If you need more turbines, my previous example, just place down a build for turbines and you're done. All you need to do is make sure you supply it with raw materials and you will have more turbines from that point on without destroying any other part of your production chain. But it also limits the amount of transporting that you need to do. And that's a huge energy saver because if you use the more modular build, you are probably going to be spamming around uh, logistic stations all over the place. Those things take up a ton of power. And then, of course, on top of that, your vessels and drones are going to use even more power, which I tried in my, my other run to kind of mitigate by the fact that I was using belts a lot uh, between the different modules. But uh, if you do it like this, you don't need to transport stuff around the place anyway. You simply build your circuit board production, for example, uh, on a planet where you're actually producing iron and copper, and then you're done. And then you only need to transport the circuit boards to the end game place where you're going to use it. So, for example, in your mall. Now, last but not least, I think this is a very fun way to play the game. Uh, it's fun to play around with these builds. So that's a good enough reason for me to use this. And once again, this particular build as well is optimized under the assumption that we have Mark III belts, Mark, uh, Mark II assemblers, and so on. Now, that means that we have uh, three materials over here, and we have circuit boards over here. And then last but not least, I made a tiny little build, and this is not going to be a final build at all, but we, I made, made a little tiny build for um, solar panels so that we can have this production start up, so we can actually move our production to the other planet, which we call the Heli, if I'm not mistaken um because we actually want to use that planet for a lot of production as well but we need solar panels to do so so we might as well start working on them and because we have all the materials on this planet we might as well start it here now um what we came here for originally was titanium now you can either uh, hook this up and uh, get some titanium uh, produced and well 
uh, that will actually allow you to bring twice as much so it might be a smart thing i did make the build in such a way that you can also bring the ore if you want and take advantage of the proliferation but it's not a huge deal because we're at 12 12 and a half percent at the moment so feel free to simply bring the titanium but that of course does mean that you need to think a little bit about a bit about where you actually place the titanium box outgoing box in your build on the other planet so i'm going to hook everything up and then we'll meet back on the other planet Okay, I hooked up our box of titanium ingots. They are now being produced. Um, we have our titanium crystals coming in over here. I hooked those up to our little science facility here that we expanded. Uh, you might remember this from last time. Uh, I removed the box that was on this side, moved to the other side. We are now producing yellow science. We are proliferating yellow science and we are making sure we are making the most of that. And this box is kind of to buffer it. This isn't an optimal setup, it will be rather slow, but we have a ton of stuff to do um, before we can actually optimize our research any further than this. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit on the slow side. What is important though is that you research the correct thing. So you want to start out at high strength titanium alloy. We need this stuff in order to make our um, logistics stations, which of course should be the next thing that you research. These two together only need 200 yellow signs, so you should easily be able to make this based on whatever you brought from the other planet. Now, once you're done with that, I suggest that you start researching either um, this one. So in the upgrades, the mass construction level four will allow you to make larger blueprints in order to be able to research that. You also need to upgrade your mecha core. It's only 300, but these two together do take you about 1100 more yellow signs. So you will need to maybe do one trip back and forth. Um, and then the last two things that I recommend that you do research um, are the nanotubes over here. And why do you need those? Well, you need those to be, to be able to make Mark III proliferator. So those two research together also cost you uh, another 550 yellow research all in all uh, you need a few thousand uh, about 2000 yellow research sounds like a lot it really isn't um, because that's basically one full inventory of titanium and that's it okay i hope you enjoyed this one we made a nice little jump in progress to yellow science and um, yeah we will be working on really upgrading our production over the next few episodes and of course we'll be proliferating all the way um, to that so um, make sure to join in and I hope to catch you in the next one